Morning. Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Well, I just want to continue really with the uh, John Hass, Paul Bennett, Liverpool drug dealers and just uh, move on. This is an interesting story. Liverpool gang links to Jill Dando murder. Police tapes suggest bullet that killed TV star was similar to ammo circulating on Merseyside. In other words, the bullet that killed the TV star Jill Dando was very similar to a lot of bullets and ammunition circulating on Merseyside. Mob links to the murder of Crime Watch boss Jill Dando emerged in a covert police operation into Liverpool gangsters John Hass and Paul Bennett. Intelligence gathered by Merseyside Police in 2004 outlined a potential underworld link to the TV presenter's unsolved killing. Police transcripts reveal claims that the ammunition used to kill Miss Dando were similar to a hall circulating on Merseyside at the time of the murder. Some of that hall is said to have been supplied to Hass and Bennett. This Saturday marks 15 years since Miss Dando, 37, was gunned down outside her home in Fulham, West London, moments after she stepped out of the car. Now, this article is from April 2014. The Crime Watch presenter was shot in the head by a single bullet. The Echo understands that confidential documents held by Merseyside police into the activities of notorious Liverpool crime barons, Hayes 64, and Bennett, 50, include references to the killing. An undercover officer who infiltrated the suspected supply chain of drugs and arms to the crooks, who are currently behind bars, recorded conversations between a Turkish drugs kingpin and a Liverpool dealer. The first transcript from July 2004 relates to a conversation between the undercover officer and the Merseyside dealer. Asked about Miss Dando, he was recorded saying, we all got questions on that. They wanted to know things like that. Even my bird said to me, crime watch, you know about that, don't you? He said he told his partner not to ask me too many questions because I won't tell you. He then told the undercover cop, all I said to her was I knew there was a contract out on her. I think it came from Scotland. That's all I said. In another conversation, the dealer told how a Scottish guns courier was found in possession of the same type of modified bullets used to kill Miss Dando. Walter Kirkwood, then 46, of Renton Dunbarton, was jailed for three years in 2001 for his role in the gun running plot between Liverpool and Scotland. He was said to be in he was said to have been working on behalf of Hass. Kirkwood's Hall included a Mac 10 machine pistol, a Smith & Wesson revolver, and rounds of the same type of ammunition used to kill Miss Dando. In, Aug in an August 2004 transcript, the officer asks about the bullets. The dealer replies, right, there, were, there was 300 and odd bullets. Walter got nicked with a Mac-10, a Magnum, high a Magnum, high velocity bullets, armor piercing bullets, and all of them, and these other bullets that were supposed to be the same bullets that killed Jewel Dando. The officer responds, they weren't exactly the same bullets, were they? The dealer then says, they had a mark on the bottom or something like that. They were the same bullets. There were 1,000 of them that came from Scotland. The officer replies, all right, so some of those bullets from that same cache before the Tur Turkish dealer interrupts had found their way down to John Hass. And also some of that cache had found their way into the gun that killed Jill Dando, asks the officer. 
Barry George, 53, a loner and epileptic who suffers from mental illness, spent eight years in prison after being wrongly convicted of her murder. The intelligence was passed on to Scotland Yard by Merseyside Police in 2004, it is understood. There is no suggestion that, ha that Hass, Bennett or Kirkwood were involved in any way with Miss Dando's death. But the revelations opened the possibility that bullets which had ended up on Merseyside had been used to carry out the killing. A Met spokesman last night said this case remains unsolved. As with all unsolved cases, any new information that comes to us will be thoroughly examined. Hayes and his nephew Bennett became infamous when they were granted a royal pardon in 1996 less than 12 months after both being jailed for 18 years in their parts in an £18 million heroin smuggling plot. They were shown mercy after apparently passing on information that led police to find major caches of weapons and drugs hauls stashed on Merseyside and beyond. But it was later discovered that it was a scam and Hass and Bennett had themselves orchestrated for the arms stashes to be planted. In 2008, the pair were convicted of perverting the course of justice. Hayes was sentenced to 22 years and Bennett to 20 years. The transcripts were disclosed by Merseyside Police to lawyers representing convicted Liverpool drugs baron David Baker. He was jailed in 2006 for his role in an international drugs cartel. Baker, formerly of Inchcape Road, Broad Green, is fighting to clear his name and claims he was fitted up by Hayes. Well, where we heard that before. So now we move on to the next article. The restricted transcript which claimed Liverpool gangsters were linked to Jill Dando murder. The Echo reveals full, unredacted copy of a secret recording and the real story behind it. Excuse me. <coughs> right, now, this one I've got to read the transcript. The Echo has obtained a full copy of a restricted police transcript of a covert recording in which claims emerged of a link between Liverpool gangs and the Jill Dando murder. Miss Dando, 37, was shot on the doorstep of her West London home in April 1999. The popular Crime Watch presenter had arrived at her home on the morning of April 26, 1999 when she was approached from behind and shot once in the head. Miss Dando was declared dead on arrival at Char Charing Cross Hospital, Hammersmith. Local man Barry George was later convicted of the high-profile murder. Mr George won an appeal following a second trial in 2008 and was freed, which led to renewed interest and speculation in the case. And also remember, Barry George was refused any compensation. He should have got half a million, but they refused to pay him out. See, not only do they refuse to pay rewards, as small as they are, right, they refused to pay Barry George, okay, who was cleared. He won his appeal following a second trial in 2008. They refused to pay him. You see, all they want to do is pay peanuts and they get monkeys. Never, ever, ever think you're going to get paid any reward. And all the headaches you're going to get with it. But that's a different story. A number of theories have been circulating about who was responsible, including, including claims that the UK crime gangs wanted Miss Dando dead because of her work on the BBC's Crime Watch programme. Some claiming the clinical way in which, which Miss Dando was targeted suggested professional criminals were behind the shooting. Yeah, and also, there's also theories about she was investigating child, pe child abuse and paedophilia with very important people. Jimmy Savile, 
okay, all the people in the VIPs, and that's why she was killed. And that Cliff Richard was slipped in, Cliff Richard, remember him, the singer, he was slipped in to become her friend and befriend her, okay, because uh, to find out what she knew. And even her husband to be, right, he got, all of a sudden when she got killed, he got all kinds of jobs. He's one of the royal doctors and all this carry on. So there's lots of other theories out there. The Echo has now obtained a full unredacted transcript of a secret recording in which a criminal claimed bullets linked to Liverpool crime boss John Hass may have been used in the Dando shooting. The meeting involved an undercover journalist, a London drug dealer and a Liverpool crook called Ken Darcy who worked for John Hass. The meeting was organised by a journalist who tried to infiltrate an organised crime group headed by John Hass. The journalist used London-based crook Sullivan Ergun as a front man to try to infiltrate the Hass gang. Ergun, who had links to the Turkish Mafia, was jailed in the 1990s for drug offences and felt betrayed by Hass. On his release from prison, he agreed to help journalists who were working on a story about Hass. During the recorded conversation, Ken Darcy claimed that there was a link between some of the bullets seized from Walter Kirkwood, who worked for Hass, and the bullet used in the Dando murder. There is no suggestion, there is no evidence to suggest Darcy, Kirkwood, Hass, or his associate Paul Bennett played any role in the murder of Miss Dando. In the below conversation, KD is Ken Darcy, GW is the undercover journalist, and SE is Sullivan Ergun. KD. Right, there was 300 and odd bullets. It's all in them reports over there. Anyway, Walter got nicked with a Mac Ton, a Mac 10, a Magnum, high velocity bullets, armor piercing bullets, and all of them, and these other bullets that were supposed to be the same bullet that killed Jill Dando. GW. See, I don't understand. He's been nicked with these bullets. KD. All kinds of bullets, guns and everything, right? After so many weeks and with the XXX forensics, XXX to come back and what forever, and whatever, there are, sorry, they're the same bullets that was used on the Dando, right? GW, when you say they're the same bullets, they weren't exactly the same bullets, were they? KD, they had a mark on the bottom or something like that. They weren't exactly the same bullets. There was 1,000 of them come from Scotland. GW, all right, some of those bullets, all right, so some of those bullets, that same cachet, SE, had found their way down to John Hass, GW, and also some of that cachet had found their way into the gun that killed Jill Dando. The conversation began with a conversation about Hass, KD, about firearms, how did you meet John Hass? Did you know anything about these murders? GW, what murders? KD, these these questions on the murders and things like that, wasn't he? GW, murders, which murders? KD, well, well, it was like the Jill Dando. We all got questions on that. GW, did you? KD, they wanted to know things like that. Now, even my bird said to me, Crime Watch, it went back 20 years and she went to me, you know about that, don't you? And I said, keep your mouth shut. GW, who said that? You know that. You know about that. KD, me bird. GW, why did she say that? KD, because she said to me, you know what happened to her, to Jill Dando. GW, why is she convinced? KD, because I told her most things anyway. Because I said to her, I'm not going to lie to you. I, had, I hadn't seen her in years. So I told her everything when she come back. I said, this is sound. I said, but, I don't, but, but don't ask me too many questions because I won't tell you. Then there was a mention of an underworld contract on Miss Dando. KD, 
All I said to was is um, I knew there was a contract out on her. I think it comes from Scotland. That's all I said. And I told her, I said, that's all I'm saying about the dando, are you? GW, but you said before it was, are you certain about that? KD, well, you've heard people say that Bobby George never done it or whatever his name is. GW, Barry George. The two men then discuss Mr. George's appeal against his murder conviction. KD, but that's why Mansfield took that case on. GW, because he, KD, Mansfield doesn't lose cases. GW, he's good Mansfield, isn't he? KD, he doesn't lose cases. Mansfield will not take a case that he knows he's going to lose. GW, right. And is he KD? Fucking hell. A little bit of forensic evidence in your pocket. I'm not having that. Not enough to do anything. GW, but, but what? Why? KD, Gavin, I'm not gonna. GW, sorry, mate. KD. Hang on, where are we? Ah, oh, KD, Gavin, I'm not going to, GW, sorry, mate. KD, I'm not going to get a cob on about it, mate. Not even talking about it, mate. In 1996, Hass returned to Liverpool after he was freed from prison just 18 months into an 18-year sentence for drug offences. Hass and associate Paul Bennett were given a royal pardon after they provided information to the authorities which led to the discovery of weapons of weapons dumps on Merseyside. Hayes set up a security company called Big Brother at Stanley Dock in North Liverpool and used the firm as a front for crime. However, police mounted an undercover operation to target his gang, which was selling guns and bullets to Scottish gangsters. In 2001, Hass was convicted of firearm offences and money laundering. Darcy was jailed for six years for drug offences and Kirkwood was jailed for three years for firearms offences. Both men worked for Hass. <clears throat> it later emerged that Hass and Bennett had used criminals to plant the weapons they led customs officers to. The two men were later convicted of conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and jailed for life. In December, the Echo revealed that Hass was behind a death threat to a serving customs officer's family. The officer was left fearing for his life and was offered a place on the witness protection programme. Last month, the Echo revealed an official memo which revealed there was political interest in the activities of Hass in the late 1990s. The Echo understands that the transcripts, which included the references to the Jill Dando murder, were passed on to the Metropolitan Police. The Echo has been told that Sullivan Ergon is now deceased. A police spokesman said to the Echo, the Metropolitan Police Service fully investigated the circumstances into the Jill Dando murder. Two trials took place and the investigation was subject to an internal review. If any new information comes to our attention, then this will be investigated. <clears throat> Well, that stinks to I Evan, doesn't it? Now we've got the final one to show, right, what a low-life scumbag this um, Hass is. And he's out now. Right, the low-life. Liverpool drugs baron smuggled gun into prison to frame inmate court herd. Two Lo uh, Liverpool drugs barons smuggled a gun into prison so they could blame it on a man being tried for a double murder a court has, he has heard. A court has, sorry, a court has been told. Two Liverpool drug barons smuggled a gun into prison so they could blame it on a man being tried for a double murder a court has been told. John Hass and Paul Bennett wanted to alert the authorities to the gun and several other halls they staged to curry favour with a judge, it was alleged. This engineered a royal pardon from then Home Secretary Michael Howard and freed the pair eleven months into an eighteen month and sorry, into an eighteen year jail sentence for heroin trafficking, Southwark Crown Court heard. 
David Halliwell said he was a prison officer when Hass, 59 at the time, and Bennett, 44 at the time, were in Manchester's Strange Ways prison awaiting their sentence. He was told there was a gun on the prison's A-wing by Paul Cook, a customs officer who received information from the men the jury were told. He was told a prison officer smuggled in the gun and the description matched canteen worker Sean Grogan who had been seen acting suspiciously on the wing the previous week. Mr Cook said the gun was destined for Thomas Burke, a man on trial for double murder, Mr Halliwell told the jury. This triggered a lockdown of all 92 inmates on the wing but no one could find the gun, Mr Halliwell said. He guessed the information came from Hass because Mr Cook often visited him, so decided to go straight to Hass, he said. Officers searched a communal area and found a self-loading pistol and ammunition exactly where Hass described. Mr. Grogan was suspended but denied knowledge of the gun and was never charged over it. Gibson Grenfell, QC, prosecuting, told the court he was jailed for three months for supplying alcohol and other items to the inmates. Trevor Burke, QC, defending Hass, said Hass called Burke by the wrong name when he gave the information. Hass was also on a part of the wing that meant he was unable to go where the gun was found, he told the jury. Robert Fortune, QC, defending Bennett, said Bennett had been a lower-grade lower prisoner and on a separate wing at the time. Police officers had believed the gun was smuggled into the prison inside a sandwich toaster, later found in the cell of a man called Roger Jordan but it was never forensically proved. Solicitor Sylvia Warner visited Hass in prison in 2005 on behalf of Burke, who was appealing a murder conviction. Hass told him Bennett put the gun in prison to earn brownie points for them both, but refused to give a statement and never spoke at Burke's appeal, he told the jury. Both men are accused of orchestrating the plot on mobile phones from prison between 1993 and August, sorry, between October 1993 and August 1995. They deny conspiracy to pervert the course of public justice, as does Deborah Hass, 37, of Tay. Um, Avenue, Knowsley, and Sharon Knowles, 36, of Waddiston Road, Walton, Liverpool. Deborah Hass also denies possessing illegal firearms. So, there we have it. So all this nonsense about Omerta and never talk to the police, we have got top Liverpool gangsters, Hass, Bennett, right, talking to customs, talking to police, they're all at it. All this nonsense about Omerta. And yes, and I mean those today as well. All the those who have been released from jail and all of those that are involved in the drug world now at the top of the tree, they're all informants, grasses, rats, touts. It's the way that they do business. Now, old-fashioned crime, yes, Omerta, keep him out. But drug crime involves being an informant. And if you're not an informant, you go to jail immediately. Or you get a huge long sentence and you're never let out. And then they strip all your assets. So they're all at it. Body trading. One drug gang in Liverpool grasses up and informs on another drug gang. The police go in and they bust them. Then that drug gang, when they're arrested, grass up the other drug gang. And then they go in and arrest them. So let's just get it in perspective, okay? In the modern 2022 drugs world, right, you've got to assume that everyone is an informant, right, is a grass, is an informant, registered with a national crime agency or with whoever, okay? And anyone who would refuse to give information to authorities and the police on a national crime agency 
is very, very, very rare. I would say, when you get up into the top echelons of the drug world, 98 or 99% of them are informants. And they try to disguise it. Oh, well, we've got corrupt police officers who are helping us and giving us information. But it's always a two-way street because those corrupt police officers need to have good results to keep their bosses happy. So where do they get information to get good results? Off of the people that they're being corrupted by. It's a two-way street. It's been happening for decades. So anyway, this is going to be Art Hostage, episode 299. The John Hass, Paul Bennett, Liverpool Gangster Story, part two. Art Hostage, signing off.